Good morning. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration here at Our Lady Guadalupe Parish and Shrine. We would like to welcome all that are present here and extend a warm welcome to all who are watching us virtually. The Mass, the mass intentions for today are for the souls of Martin Lopez, Sr., for the soul of Deacon Jesse Guajardo, and for the soul of Vivian Garcia. Our principal celebrant is Father David, assisted by Deacon Ricardo. Please tune in to your radio station to 100.9 to listen to the liturgy. Thank you and God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Father. <clears throat> we place ourselves in the presence of our God under the power of his cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Friends, as we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we recall to mind that we are in need of God's loving embrace of mercy. We humble ourselves and ask for this blessing. You were to heal the contrite of heart.
Now, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O oh Lord, at all times go before us and follow after. Make us always determined to carry out good works. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed and prudence was given to me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her because all gold in view of her is a little sand and before her silver is to be counted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light. Because of the splendor of her never yields to sleep, yet all good things together came to me in her company and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Fill us with your love, O Lord. And we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O Lord. And we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord. daybreak with your kindness that we may shout for joy and gladness all of our days make us glad for the days when you afflicted us for the years when we saw evil fill us with your love O Lord and we will sing for be seen by your servants and yet your glory by their children and may the gracious care of the Lord be God our God be ours prosper the work of our hands for us prosper the work of our hands fill us with your love O Lord and we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, 
A man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God him alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from youth. Jesus, looking at him, with loved him and said to him, You're lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but, for God, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life at the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, let me start off with a funny little story, a little joke. It's about a man who took his wife and his mother-in-law to the Holy Land for a few weeks of vacation. The three of them spent several weeks visiting the Holy Sites, <clears throat> where Jesus was born, where he lived, and where he died. It was all very inspirational for all of them. However, sad to say, Toward the end of the vacation, the mother-in-law had a sudden heart attack, and she died. Now, of course, the couple was distraught with sorrow. But there were certain things that needed to be done to get the body back to the United States for the funeral services. And so as they were making those arrangements, the local authorities explained that they could either ship the body back to the United States, which would be very expensive, costing over $20,000, or they could bury the body right there in the Holy Land for only $1,000. Immediately the man said, uh, no, we will ship the body home to the United States, and we will pay the $20,000. Well, surprised, the local authorities said, are you sure? That is a huge expense for something that we can do here. And let me assure you, we will provide a burial service which you will be happy with. After thinking about it a little bit more, the man said, Look, on this vacation I have learned that 2,000 years ago, 
They buried a guy in this land, and three days later, he rose from the dead. I just cannot take that chance with my mother-in-law. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that's a funny little story. I want to bring out something on a serious level in that story. My friends, that man believed in the power of resurrection. And that man was willing to base his decision on that belief. And the question I want to ask us today is, how much do we believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus? And how much are we willing to base our decisions on that belief? My friends, it's one thing to believe. It's an entirely other thing to base your life on that belief. Because let me assure you, not everybody does so. Take, for example, the gospel today. That story begins in such a beautiful way. A man comes to the Lord Jesus and kneels down before him. And this man is ready to make that ultimate commitment unto God in order to receive the gift of life, eternal life. Now, it is obvious that this man believes. And we see that he is serious about his faith because the gospel tells us that he obeyed all the commandments. And so basically, he tells Jesus this, Lord, this is my vision for my life and how I want to get to heaven. But Jesus responds to this man by saying, that's fine. But let me share with you the vision I have for your life. Let me show you what your life could be. Go and sell all that you have. Then give the money to the poor and come back and follow me. I want you to be one of my disciples. The gospel tells us that the man couldn't do it. The gospel says his face fell and he went away sad. In other words, he withdrew from the presence of the Lord. I have to say, I've always wondered if that man was a disappointed man for life. Now, we can interpret his action in several ways. But basically, he told Jesus, Jesus, I believe my vision is better than the vision you have for my life. And so, therefore, I want the vision I have more than the vision you have for my life. Now, although this man was sincere, he was, he was not ready to base his decisions on what he believed. The man was ready to commit his life unto the Lord, but under his terms. And so the closest he got to commit in his life to the Lord was almost but not quite it was a almost commitment it was as if he was right there on the verge of making that total commitment but he never did which begs the question to be asked how many of us right now does this story describe Believing enough to come to this mass, to church, and possibly ready to make that commitment, but afraid to base all decisions on what we believe. It's as if we're right there, but not quite. I want you to notice that in the gospel, Jesus allows this man to make the choice. His choice was to simply to walk away and not make that wholehearted commitment that he seemed so ready to do. My friends, God has never forced anyone, not one person in the history of salvation, to make a choice for him. In fact, God has always allowed the choice from the very beginning. 
Adam and Eve. Paradise with God the Creator or the forbidden fruit. We know the choice they made. They chose the fruit and God allowed their choice. Abel and Cain, both of them sons of Adam. Adam chooses God and Cain chose murder. And God allowed that choice to happen. <clears throat> David and Saul, both kings of Israel. David chose God and Saul chose power. And God accepted that choice. Peter and Judas, both disciples of the Lord who denied the Lord. Peter chose mercy and Judas chose death. And God allowed the two choices. My friends, there are so many examples in the Bible where God allows the person, the individual, to choose for themselves. But maybe one of the best examples takes place on the day of crucifixion when there were two others that were being crucified with Jesus. We all remember the prayer of that thief that repented and his words as he said, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus' response to him was, today you will be with me in paradise. We read that story and we admire that prayer. In fact, I am sure that some of us have even voiced that prayer for ourselves at one time or another. But my friends, dare we forget the other one who was crucified on that day? Not the Lord Jesus, but the other thief who did not repent. What about him? He was in the same situation of the other thief. It was the same opportunity that he had. In fact, don't you think that Jesus should have offered some type of encouragement or words of invitation, words of persuasion, an invitation to repentance? Because after all, Jesus told the story of the shepherd who left the 99 sheep and went after the one that was lost. He also told the story of the woman who cleaned the whole house and searched for the one lost coin. Those are powerful stories of how the Lord goes after the one who is lost. But my friends, do you remember the story of the father and the prodigal son? The son who decided to leave his father and live a life of sin. Do you remember what the father did when the son decided to leave? What the father did was absolutely nothing. He allowed the choice, and so he let his son leave. Let's look at it this way. In the story of the sheep, that one was lost innocently. The coin was lost by accident. But my friends, the prodigal son left intentionally. It was his choice. And the father allowed the choice. My friends, if you search the scriptures, there are so many stories in the Bible that speak of those who are on the very verge of making a choice for God. But as you continue to read their story, they never quite made that commitment. I think it could be argued that even Herod was on the verge of making a decision for Jesus. Because scripture tells us that Herod was impressed with the words of Jesus. But as the story develops, we read that he almost responded to God. He came so close in responding to God. It could be argued that Pilate was another one. Pilate said three times that he found no guilt in Jesus. 
He admitted that Jesus had done no wrong. But it was a crowd that convinced Pilate to act against Jesus. It was as if Pilate almost heard the truth. And so therefore, almost responded in the way that God would have wanted. Maybe the saddest example is that of Judas Iscariot. He was a disciple chosen specifically by the Lord Jesus. Judas was a disciple who was close to the Lord. He heard the Lord preach on a daily basis. Judas saw who the Lord was just like the rest of the disciples did. Judas came to know Jesus intimately. But Judas never made that commitment that Jesus was looking for. And so we can say about Judas, he almost made that commitment. But in reality, he never did. There's a great lesson in all of this. My friends, don't make the same mistake that all these others have made. Don't make the mistake that the rich young man in the gospel did today. Oh, he was good, and we know that, because he followed the commandments. But my friends, he was not good enough. And so Jesus asked him for a bit more. But the man decided he could not base his decision on what he believed. And that funny little story I began with. The man didn't want to take a chance on the mother-in-law because he had come to believe in the power of resurrection. My friends, the disciples, except for Judas, also came to believe in that power. And it radically changed every decision of their lives. The question for us that I want us to deal with this week or better yet, I want you as an individual personally to deal with is how much do you believe in the Lord Jesus in his death and resurrection? And how much are you willing to base all your decisions on that belief? How much do you really believe? 90%? 90%? Even so, a 95% commitment still likes the 5%. Let me assure you, God has asked us to respond to him with everything that we are and everything that we have. We may be good. In fact, I will, I will have to say, since you are here in mass, since you are here in church, we have to say, yes, there's a basic goodness about us. But when it comes to the Lord, good is not good enough. Good is not good enough. Our God is asking for a total commitment. But there is one thing that we should remember, which would encourage us. My friends, God's vision for your life is bigger than the one that you have for yourself. And he will never ask you to do anything that is beyond your ability. We may think, I don't think I can do that. But listen to the words of the scriptures where it says, it is impossible for a human being. It is not. It is not impossible for our God. I'm going to say this directly and clearly. I know for a fact that there are some among us right now here in this mass who are on the verge of making a wholehearted commitment to God. I know for a fact that there are good people among us, but I'm going to call you out. You being good is not good enough. When it comes to our God, your goodness is not good enough. I know for a fact there are some who are on the verge right now of making that total commitment under our God. And in fact, you know who you are. We come to Mass. We do the things. We obey the commandments. 
But our God wants more. You know you should be giving more of yourself to God in the church. But there's something in your life that is holding you back. Whatever it is. It could be fear. It could be doubt. It could be a sinful habit. Whatever it is, there are some of us that are good, but in God's eyes, we are not good enough. And so he is asking for that total commitment. And you know that you hesitate like the man in the gospel today. I cannot emphasize enough that when it comes to God, good is good, but not good enough. God is asking for a total commitment. Many saints have said, have told us, that the only reason that we are not a saint right now is because we do not want it bad enough. My friends, this weekend, I would say do not go down in history as one who almost received eternal life. I would ask all of us to be fully committed to the Lord, basing all of our decisions on what we truly believe in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in his death and resurrection, because in that way, we will all be joined together for eternal life. And one more thing. You need not fear what God has asked of you. Scripture tells us that it may be impossible, impossible for us. It is not impossible for God. Look at how Jesus responded to the disciples when when Peter said, Lord, we have given up everything to follow you. And Jesus says, there is no one. There is no one who has given up something for my sake and the sake of the gospel that will not receive 100 times more in this life and in eternal life. My friends, let that be the motivation and our response unto our God. For what we give up for God is nothing compared to to what we shall receive from him. What I want to do is end this sermon by praying for all of us a prayer of total commitment. This prayer is associated with St. Ignatius of Loyola. I want you to join me in this prayer, <coughs> excuse me, by saying amen at the very end. If in fact, you are ready to make that total commitment to the Lord, if you're not ready, I'm going to ask you, don't say amen. I may not be able to hear you. I may not be able to see you. But I assure you, my God, your God sees within your heart. And so if you say amen to this prayer with me, you are telling the Lord, I'm ready. I realize that my goodness is not good enough, and I'm ready now to make that total commitment. And so let us pray. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will. All I have and call my own, you have given all to me. And to you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. 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 <clears throat> My friends, I realize that being fully committed unto the Lord, it's not easy. We've got a lot of things in this world that work against us. I realize that our God realizes that. And so he wants to help us, as he says in Scripture, it may be impossible for us. It is not impossible for our God. And so as we renew our faith, let us rely on the Lord to give us all that we need in order to be faithful and totally commitment. And so we profess, I believe, believe in, in one, one God, God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
through him all things were made. For us and for our our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, we put our trust in the commitment that God the Father has with us as his people. Then we present our needs. For the church, that the word of God may be living and effective in her, discerning the reflections and thoughts of each of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the spirit of wisdom may come upon world leaders to guide them in the difficult decisions they must make, that they may prefer her to riches and power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who seek, for for those who search for Jesus, but whose souls are burdened with possessions, that he that his look of love and his wise demands may break the bonds of their attachments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For vocations that many young people may discover within themselves the God-given strength to live family and all human gain for the sake of Jesus and his holy gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have asked for our prayers in a time of sickness, unemployment, or grief, that God for whom all things are possible may heal and help them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our faithful departed, who have come before the one to whom we all must render an account, that the word of God may find them true and purify them quickly for the joys of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the end of abortion in our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for the protection of our families, our children, our grandchildren, all those involved. We ask that the Lord, through the intercession of St. Benedict, St. Michael, St. Padre Pio, protect and lead them closer unto himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And now, placing our trust in in the... commitment that our God the Father has with us by sending his son into this world. You hear it in the parking lot and those listening through the internet, joining us through the internet. I invite you to add your own intentions in faith and confidence in God's will for your life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We now ask for the power of intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Hail Mary, full full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
now that the gates have been prepared, my friends, let us pray that this, our sacrifice, and the very sacrifice of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good and the good of all his holy church. church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ your beloved Son. For by your word you created the world. And you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator. And he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is indeed the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory and in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified O God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life bless indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opened the scriptures and breaks the bread therefore father and most merciful we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. And once again, he gave you thanks. He then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins, 
may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Be all my friends, the mystery of faith. For Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of us, your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that had been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, enliven us through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, religious nuns, deacons, seminarians, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may kindly devote ourselves to the service of the gospel. Lord Jesus, keep us attentive to the needs of all people that share in their grief and pain, their joy and hope. We may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Lord God, remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Today we pray for Martin Sr., Deacon Jesse, and Vivian. We pray for all those who have died whose faith you alone have known. Lord God, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They're in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Juan Diego, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, my friends, together as one family, we pray in the words that Jesus has taught us.
Lord, we, your disciples within this world, we pray that you deliver us from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jesus Christ who said to our apostles peace I leave you it is my peace that I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and gracefully grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen, amen. and may the peace of the Lord always be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit let us offer each other a sign of peace Behold, my friends, God the Father's commitment unto us. It is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not am worthy that you should enter into, into my room, but only Lord, say the Lord, word, and my soul shall be healed. <laughs> May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. a small reminder that if you're not able 
to get down from your cars to receive communion. Put on your hazard lights and we will come to you. For those who cannot receive sacramentally at this time, offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Grace abounds in deepest waters, sovereign hand, be my guide. Where fear may fail and fear surrounds me, you never fail, and you won't stop.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I believe we have uh, one announcement to make. That coach is coming. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> a happy and lasting marriage is always of three, God, your spouse, and you. I would like to invite you to Spanish marriage retreat here at Our Lady of Guadalupe on Saturday, October 23rd. There will be praise and worship and holy hour. I hope to see you there. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our leave, we would like to bless all those who are celebrating special days in their lives, their birthdays and anniversary. I know we have a, a, a few. For the anniversary of 23 years, uh, Josh and Jennifer Reyes. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> For birthdays, we have Terry Reyes, Bobby Netherland, Gracie Chavez, Ruben Montemayor, Adriana Ter Teresa, and Jacob Ontiveros. If you are also celebrating your birthday or your anniversary this coming week, put on your hazard lights or honk your horn and let me know you're here. Very few are here with, are with us. Okay, I know there's some people on the internet that there are joining us uh, live. They also have birthdays and anniversaries, so we'll bless them as well. So we'll bless anyone here celebrating those birthdays and anniversaries. Those that we mentioned, and those through the internet. Let's bless them under the power of God's love. Father God, first of all, we give you great thanks for the examples of faith within our life that encourage us to be wholeheartedly committed unto you. We would ask that you bless those celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries, celebrating that gift of life given unto them. Their own life as, as you brought them into this world and their life that they have within their marriage. Bless them and keep them strong in the faith so that they might feel your divine embrace as you respond to their commitment and that they might lead others closer to you by the way they live their lives. Not simply by what they say, but especially, especially by what they do. We bless them and literally place them into your hands under the power of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Happy birthday and congratulations. <laughs> Prayer for vocations. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, as you once called the first disciples to make them fishers of men, let your sweet invitation continue to resound. Come, follow me. Give young men and women the grace of responding quickly to your voice. Support our bishops, priests, and consecrated people in their apostolic labor. Grant perseverance to our seminarians and to all those who are carrying out the idea of a life totally consecrated to your service. Mary, Mother of the Church the motto of every vocation, help us to say yes to the Lord who caused us to cooperate in the divine plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Google. Our friends, let's not uh, forget today's message, especially in the gospel, because I believe that in the gospel, God is telling us that good is okay, but it's not good enough. God is asking for that total commitment of everything that we are, everything that we have. That's the level that we need to be at. And so this week, let's work on doing that. Whatever is holding us back from that total commitment unto our God, 
and that we base all of our decisions on our belief in Jesus, in his death and resurrection. Whatever is holding us back, let's work on that this week so that we might be fully committed unto our God. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May the blessings of Almighty God, Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Let us go in peace glorifying our God with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Angel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us.